Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's August 2019 and we've just got first access to the Harpoon anti-ship missile, the AGM-84 Delta in the Hornet. So we now have three times fireable NATO anti-ship missiles. We have the United Kingdom Sea Eagle, as you can see here, with the Swedish RB-15 Foxtrot, dropped by the Vigan and the United States AGM-84 Delta Harpoon. Today's video is, as requested by you, a comparison to see which one is best. Now note, obviously the AGM-84D is in very early access at the moment and has limited functionality, so you can take it with a pinch of salt from that respect. When it is finished in months or weeks or whatever, I will go and revisit this video then. But this is what you want now, so it's what you get. The format of the video is we're going to use each of these missiles, a Sea Eagle or two, RB-15s, and a few harpoons, we're going to shoot them at a Stennis CV carrier on the hostile side. This carrier is set to fire, so if it can detect our missiles, it will try and shoot at them with its missiles, its guns, whatever. And we'll see how our missiles cope and how much damage that they can inflict. Now, if you know a bit about the damage models in DCS with the carriers, at least, they're a bit all over the place. And that's probably what we're going to find today, but we'll try and make as much sense of it as we can. Once we've got our data, we'll then head back into Windows and I'll show you my spreadsheet of all of the collected data and then we'll do a comparison and find out which missile is best. Okay, Vigan first of all, let's pump a couple of RB-15Fs in there. So, just remember how to do this. Uh, radar on, search for the vessel, uh, impulse, uh, attack, isn't it? For a dumb shot. Find the carrier there, I can already see with my eyes there. Aim at him. And cap is Bruiser 1, give it a few seconds, Bruiser 2, it's going out of action. Yeah, that should hopefully do. Yeah, let's go and check our babies out. So here we've got the RB-15s in cruise, it is rather loud I know, they're going to descend. Once they found their target, they're going to descend to terminal. In fact, they're descending to terminal now, so they're going to go down all the way down to five feet in some cases. Wow, look at that, five, four feet, amazing. 597 knots, so very fast. Fastest missile here today. Sea Eagle, 423 knots, much slower, and has a terminal and cruise of 45 feet. Here we go, Let's see if the Sea Wizards open up. Yes, they are. So they've detected this even at nine feet. It's a We're snaking now to help evade fire, make it harder to target us. Boom! Boom! So that's two missiles, and we've managed to get 40%. 47% damage with two missiles and note that they hit the hull instead of going over the top like some missiles can so there was no pop-up uh, let's check our sea eagles out so they've still got quite a way to go uh, the carrier should still be effective at 47% damage we'll see a pop-up with these seems like the phalanxes, the sea wizards are out of order because they can fire at these missiles. Unfortunately we don't get a percentage damage anymore because we didn't fire those missiles but that I'm pretty sure should be an out of commission ship but just to be safe we'll send in the Hornet Getting it set up, and just skim attack, fixed point, none of that, I don't want any of that. Search, 5, self destruct, 60, bearing, 3, 5, 9, enter. 3 seconds to fire. Meow. Missile away. Send another. Are we getting shot at? Don't seem to be getting shot at. Low. Oh, we've already got our details selected for the next missile. That's handy. Missile away. 
Missile away, missile away. Turn away. These are very early access. We have limited function. They're pretty terribly unreliable at the moment, to be honest, but that's to be expected. Oh, it's sinking, look. Well, we'll see if we can still hit it anyway. Yeah, it's found the target, look. Oh, damn. That just won't do. Let's go and do that again. Okay, we've got a fresh carrier. Water pilot. Barometric hold. Auto thrust on. 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 Uh, low. Which I always suggest. Skim, because pop-up's not working at the moment. Search. Five, enter, destruct, 60, enter, bearing, three, five, nine, enter, six seconds and then we fire, and fire, that's how quickly you can set the thing up, okay, we've got the next settings, fire, 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 autopilot off, auto thrust off, and we're out of here, sir. Oh, beautiful harpoons coming your way. Well, I did tell them to go 5,000 feet, but they're going 15, so they're probably going to miss. Okay, this guy's listened to my orders. At least he should work. He's found the target in his, his radar cone. You're going to get super low. Hopefully he's not going to crash. Will the Sea Wizards see him? Probably not. What we found in DCS is that for some reason the Sea Wizards of pretty much any of the aircraft carriers, sorry, any of the ships can't see harpoons. They can see RB-15s, they can see Sea Eagles, they can see all of the other anti-ship, but they can't see harpoons. We don't think this is realistic at all. This is the same size, I'm pretty sure, as anything else. Maybe there's some kind of secret ECM in it, but for whatever reason, the Sea Wizards can't see harpoons. It's been like this for a few months. We've been doing a lot of ship Oh my God, Jesus, that was close. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Now, thump. Only 1% damage at the moment, so the damage model of the uh, harpoons clearly, clearly aren't working at the moment. But early access, uh, you know, don't worry about it, it's all going to get fixed. So, now that was just a little bit of fun. I've actually spent all day doing this, um, trying hundreds of tests, well maybe not hundreds, tens of tests I've done. Uh, to try and work out the damage modeling and what can pop up, what can can't, what can snake, what can't, and so on. So what we're going to do now is go and look at my summary and we'll look at some proper data. So here's the data that I've collected. So we've got the Harpoon, the AGM-84D from USA, the Swedish RB-15F and the Sea Eagle by UK. Introduction dates, 1977 for the Harpoon, 1985 for the RB-15F, 1982 for the Sea Eagle. Maximum cruise speed, the most I've managed to get out of any of these is a harpoon at maximum altitude. We've managed to get, I've managed to get 613 KTAS. Just behind the RB15F and the Sea Eagle is unfortunately very slow. The terminal speed, i.e. the speed at which it's now very low near to the sea and attacking a ship, is very low on the harpoon. It actually purposefully slows itself down in DCS at the moment. It, again, it'll probably be fixed, but that's what it is at the moment, 455 knots. Uh, the Vigans 597, which is great for dodging Sea Wiz and radar and whatnot, and a miserable uh, 423 for the Sea Eagle. The maximum drop altitude seems to be the maximum of the Hornet of about 60,000 feet. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've not found any restriction. The 6,000 feet maximum for the RB15 drop height, not sure why it's so low. And the Sea Eagle uh, seems to be the maximum of the aircraft, 36,000 feet. And what we're doing, the highest value of importance is getting marked as a green box, and that is a point for that weapon. And we'll add up the points at the bottom, as you can see. Cruise altitude for the Harpoon is selectable between 5,000 and 35,000 ASL. Cruise, out of, cruise altitude for the RB15 seems to be on 100 feet, whatever I do, I can't seem to change that. Always happy to be corrected, but let me know what you guys think. There may very well be options in there to uh, adjust my cruise height. Uh, the Sea Eagle, I couldn't get it to cruise anything other than 45 to 50 feet. Terminal altitude, so the altitude at which point it's attacking within a few miles of the ship is 5 to 50 feet, the harpoon, so down to 5 feet. 5 to 10 feet for the, uh, so for the RB15F, so again down to 5 feet. And 45 to 50 feet, again for the Sea Eagle, I couldn't get it any lower than that in DCS.
and hence these two get a green mark. All of them have got turbo jets and I didn't really want to rate the thrusts because we've already got that really in the speeds there. Range 70 nautical miles for the Harpoon apparently, 38 for the Vigor, uh, RB15, 59 for the Sea Eagle. Presumably this is a function of the power they make and the height that they can fly at. So this guy here can cruise at 35,000 feet apparently so he can get 70 miles that way. This guy here is very powerful and fast but he burns fuel a lot more so he only gets 38 miles. And the Sea Eagle is slow and not very powerful, can't fly high, but because it's uh, quite slow, it can go 59 miles. Weight, 1455 pounds for the Harpoon, which is a lot. 1243 for the RB15, which is the lightest here. The lighter the missile, the better for all sorts of reasons. Uh, so that gets a green tick and 1320 for the Sea Eagle. Warhead, the bigger the better, all high explosive blast frag as far as I'm aware from what I can see. 495 pounds for the Harpoon, which is pretty big. 440 for the RB15. 506 for the EC Eagle, so we've got the biggest warhead here. So that gets a green tick. Fusing, impact only for a Harpoon, at least at the moment. Impact and proximity for the RB15, at least that's what it says. And we can't work out for the Sea Eagle, presumably impact. So we're going to give a green tick to the RB15. Cruise guidance. As far as the information I can find, this model here is INS autopilot, not GPS. I stand to be corrected. INS autopilot, INS autopilot. Terminal guidance. So once it's found its target through its sensors, it is active home radar homing for all of them. Terminal abilities. So the harpoon can strike low and at the waterline or the side of the hull. And it can also pop up and hit from above superstructure or deck. RB15 can hit low again. It, can't, it cannot pop up well, at least from what I can find in the manual, uh, but it can snake left and right, as we saw, to help evade fire. Interestingly, if you use the AI-controlled version, it does pop up. So that missile does have pop-up ability in DCS, but I just can't work out how to use it from uh, as a human. And I've just scoured through the manual. I can't find any tactical op uh, op options for it. So as far as I can see, it is hull only. Sea Eagle pop-up only, whether it's human or whether it's AI-driven. So these two, because they have two abilities, get the green tick. DCS targeting, this is very oversimplified, but just to give you a rough idea, the harpoon can be fired on a bearing, you know, dumb fired on a bearing with some basic distance parameters, but not proper ranging, or it can be bearing via radar, so you can find targets with your ground or sea radar. And via on that bearing, we don't have any of this tech in DCS yet, so I don't know what else it will have, whether it will have select movable waypoints and stuff like that. We'll just have to wait and see. RB15 can fire dumb fire bearing only. It can fire waypoints via radar. So you can place certain waypoints to radar, which is, I'd say, equivalent to bearing via radar here, or what we're probably going to get in the Hornet. It remains to be seen. And we've also got waypoints via F10 map, so it's not very immersive, waypoints via F10 map, but it is incredibly useful. At the end of the day, it is a video game, I know people don't like saying that, but we do need usability, playability, so that is a bonus option to me. So with this guy gets three different ways of doing it, he gets the tick. This guy here, unfortunately, is mission editor, unit selection only. So you have to do it from the mission editor, which, to be honest, is awful. So that's just how that is. In real life, I have absolutely no idea how a sea eagle is targeted how the targeting data is done uh, please let me know i can only guess really can the stennis shoot it with its sea whizzes definitely not harpoon definitely yes rb15 definitely yes sea eagle again we're not sure why that is this is the biggest heaviest missile surely and it's not just the stennis it's most of the other ships we found as well why can't anything shoot the harpoon down it is frustrating us at the moment and i, I don't even mean the fa18 harpoon i mean the ones fired by other ships can't be shot down either so it makes the ships completely unfair when you do ship battles so well i'll leave that one with you that's that's a, an issue obviously generally speaking when sh attacking ships uh, there's a damage model for hitting, hitting the hull and a separate damage model for hitting the deck with high fidelity ships carriers don't seem to have armored hulls as ever i'm happy to be corrected but from what i've seen in dcs doing some testing i've spent hours testing this thing there doesn't seem to be any difference between hull attacks and deck attacks. What we found from the harpoon is that you can get a maximum of 1% damage by hitting it in the hull and hitting it in the deck. We can't get the pop-up attacks to work at the moment. It just refuses to obey when I set the uh, parameter to pop-up. So we've got no way of testing that. That will obviously be fixed at the time. We have a maximum score in CAP's score chart of NATO anti-ship missiles as of August 2019 of 6 for the harpoon. RB15 does 23% damage hitting on the side on the hull. And if you use a pop-up attack from the AI, it use, it does 57% damage per missile, which is a vast amount of damage and a little bit unrealistic, I think. But 
Let me know what you think. Sea Eagle. I can't get it to hit from the hull because AI or human driven, it'll only hit from above. And when it hits from above, and I need to correct this, I wrote 25 there. I meant to write 35 and take that with a pinch of salt as well. It's really hard to, uh, to test, get that to work and test. But that's what I found from hitting it on the upper deck. Oh, the reason I haven't given any of these green is basically because uh, it's just really dodgy at the moment, to be honest. Uh, I'm, I'm really not sure about the damage models at the moment. So I'm just going to leave that until that's working better. And sorry if I forgot to say the Harpoon and the RB15 draw at six and the poor little beautiful British Sea Eagle only one. So that's it. That's my comparison of the currently fireable weapons that we have in DCS for anti-ship on the NATO side. In fact, I think on any side. Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, let me know any information you want me to add. And like I said, once we've got fully working, implemented AGM84, we'll go and do it again and see if it wins. Hope you enjoyed that. See you later.